PDP governor's call for state police restructuring, ranching and devolution of powers. And we have uncovered over 400 million or 400 online sites uh, set up to fight the Buhari administration, says Lai Mohammed. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Cohn. Governors on the platform of the opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, have assembled for a one-day consultative meeting on the state of the nation and issued a six-point communique where it insisted that ranching be adopted as a permanent solution to the herders' farmers' clashes in the country. The governors also restated that the call for restructuring was important and called on Mr. President Muhammad Buhari to summon a meeting of the Nigeria Police Council and devolve more powers to states to reduce the tension and insecurity. Well, joining me to have this conversation is Shegun Shopita, uh, a political analyst, and of course, um, Darlington Oji. He is a spokesperson for the People's Democratic Party um, in River State. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. So I'm, I'm going to start with you, Shegel, because you work for uh, an NGO and um, CSOs, as at last week, had called for the head of Mr. President, metaphorically. They're asking the president to be impeached. Uh, they're saying that they're unhappy as to how things have been handled under this administration in terms of security. But the governors of the PDP states um, have adopted a six-point communique uh, and they're asking for a, a permanent solution to this farmer's headers conflict. Um, and they're asking that the constitution be amended to accommodate a devolution of powers of some sort. Um, how realistic is this call in light of all the things that we have seen unravel itself over the months, and in fact, since 2020, um, does it seem like it's something that can really be done? Um, yeah, so uh, thanks for having me once again. Um, I, I, it's a bit um, befuddling uh, when you hear uh, people that should be acting, talking. Um, so I reacted to uh, this you know, news um, in two ways. One is to acknowledge that, yes, you know, they are communicate, said all the right things, and it's very good. And another thing that I do like about it, you know, especially given that they are calling for abolition or support for abolition of open, the fact that it's the PDP Governors Forum, which has governors from all the states across the region, the country, including the North. Um, so the, the general perception before now had been that uh, most Northern um, states and most Northern politicians um, are, are against the very idea of banning of open grazing because they... Oh, I think we lost you there for a second, Shegun. Um The connection is a little bad. Well, I'm going to toss now to Darlington Oji. Now, Darlington, you're speaking, obviously, um, in, in, in regards uh, of the PDP. The PDP has asked that um, the president um, deal with the issue of insecurity and um, have also spoken to the APC administration to focus more on policies and dealing with what's happening in the country. Um, it's not just the APC that's running this country. Of course, the PDP governors are also part of this. Uh, and I, I agree that on the, on the one hand, they have come up with a, a six-point communique. But again, it still falls back to Mr. President to make uh, the move. Why did, why, why did the PDP choose to say that the APC should focus on policies? Are they not doing that right now? Well, let me thank you for the privilege given to me first let me correct an impression i was the immediate past publicity secretary of pdp in river state and not the current publicity secretary great that's one two uh for us in river state and an average in nigeria we support the idea of the six point agenda of the uh, pdp governance forum what are they asking for 
what are the points they have marshaled out? Does he have a direct impact on the average Nigerian person? If he does, is it proper at this time for such call to be made? Yes. Now, let me pick on one point. When they talk about open grazing or condemnation of open grazing, you will agree with me that those who react cow or cattle, they are personal business like a woman that has opened supermarket running the business for herself. Therefore, it must be confined within an environment, knowing that the profit you are making is for your personal use. And again, talking about convoking National Security Council meeting, so that the issue of insecurity that is bedeviling Nigerian people today can be addressed properly. And you know that the powers that are served with the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria through the Constitution is so anymore that it is not just their mere saying. That is why they are saying, when elders, when stakeholders, uh, when leaders in this nation meet and talk from different angles, and I agree, Marshall has a point, of course it will affect the common Nigeria. Whether you like it or not, take for instance, the killings of security agents that are happening in Nigeria. Those people are securing both the APC and PDP and other political uh, parties. And those people are relatives and parents of different different people. So a lot of persons are directly invite, uh, impacted. So they call that the security National Security Council meeting should be uh, convoked. They call that open crazy should be banned and supported by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Great. They uh, call that state police and local government policing, which is the community uh, vigilante, should be approved and supported by all. I all think right. it's not a call by bad faith. I, I, Rather, I, what I have seen in recent times is that everything is being politicized. But for me, I think that it's important that we come out to support the idea of the PDP governor's group. Again, you can you won't forget just a week ago of the Asata call. That Asaba meeting APD governors, PDP governors, and other political party governors are in that meeting and they spoke in one voice. It shows clearly. But Nigerians are worried. It shows clearly that insecurity is a problem that all of us must put our hands on death and fight it head off. Okay. And make sure that we don't politicize it. I so have... for me, they call it just, it's timely, and it's appropriate. I have a question for you, Mr. Darlington, and please do not take this personal. Um, but if the roles were reversed, and I'm talking about the issue of devolution of powers, if the roles were reversed and the PDP were the government in power, do you think that your party would have gone for the devolution of powers, being that this is one of the major recommendations by the PDP Governors Forum, not the Southern Governors Forum, but the PDP Governors Forum is asking for a devolution of powers to state. And don't forget that the PDP had been in power for 16 years. Why did the PDP not see the need for devolution of powers at that time? Thank you. You see, Nigeria should be progressive in mind. When you can vouch for a people that what has been done in the past is wrong, you need to also dwell on it. All you need to do is to improve on it. If we are not talking about whether PDP was in power yesterday or not, there is a government that preached change that convinced Nigeria to say that we are going to do things differently from what PDP has done in the last 16 years or thereabouts. Are they doing it? Must you always say this happened in the past, therefore we will repeat it. No. No, the answer is no. The, you know, change is one thing that is permanent. Change in the right direction. APC made a lot of promises. It led Nigerian people to key into the, uh, the policies or programs that were presented to Nigerian people. They should carry it out and stop complaining. There are problems. Those problems need attention. Whether, Niger whether PDP addresses those issues yesterday or not, today we are saying that it is what that is what uh, something that is what doing. I think they are talking about the position of power. It's across the 36 states. Okay. Because the local government needs to be free. The state assembly needs to be free. The judiciary needs to be free so that they will be taking the decision on behalf of Nigeria people that will be judged. I'm going to come back to you to take you up on, on, on judiciaries and, and, and all of that. But let me go back to Shegun. Shegun, we lost that connection for a bit. Um, so I was asking about how feasible it is for us to get that issue of state policing on the table 
up and running, getting the president to put out an executive order. Why should he? Why should he put out an executive order in the first place? Um, and, and how do we even make him see the need to? Because again, I'm asking these questions because there have been so many calls from past leaders to elder statesmen to former security chiefs. I mean, literally. Many people have asked and made suggestions. Even the former Senate president wrote an open letter to the president. So um, what makes us think that the president is going to heed, um, you know, this particular call by the PDP Governors Forum? I, I think that, you know, for anybody to expect anything from this president right now, you know, um, you'll basically be deceiving yourself. With all apologies to whoever might be offended. Um, I am not even sure that we have a precedent. You know, you know, you know, well, the challenge I, I, we have I'm now, sure that we do. And, and this is the problem that Shago, I have with all I, of this. Shago, I'm sure that we do. We do have a Sorry? president and he's in France right now talking with other heads of yeah, state we, we, on we the a issue of COVID and yeah. other things. I, I mean, I mean that, yeah, sure. I, I mean that figuratively, you know. I mean, I know the president is there and I'm one that would always uh, be respectful of public office just because of the office, not necessarily because of the person holding the office. So whoever is president is the president of Nigeria, and I respect that office. But the point I'm making is that one of the reasons that you have this cacophony, it's a cacophony of noise. I mean, it's, it's all noise as far as I'm concerned. Everything that the PDP Governors Forum, um, the South, uh, South, Southern Governors Forum, uh, the APC, you know, whatever they're saying now, is noise. They are not serious. Not one single one of them is serious. You know, and I say that for, for, for a reason. Um, look, like you said, I heard you say something when you were responding to Darlington earlier. The PDP was in power for 16 years, Marianne, 16 years, right? How dare they come out now and be talking about restructuring and devolution of powers and, and all of that noise, what were they doing when they, when they could do something about it? And the irony of this is that in those 16 years, the APC in its various um, 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 incarnations was consistently demanding restructuring and devolution of powers and um, um, uh, true federalism, you know, and all of those nice sounding sound bites, political sound bites. Now the, the APC has been in power for six years, six. You know, if you wanted to write a new constitution, Marianne, you would have written it in six years. And now all of a sudden, the APC is saying the PDP is making noise when they are asking for devolution of powers. Isn't that just ironic, right? So I don't think any Nigerian that is serious should take either of these two groups of people serious. They know what they're doing. It's all a game for them. Um, you know, so asking whether the president will do an executive order to, to implement any one of the things that this PDP governor is talking about, you know, is, is I think the answer is obvious to all of us. And it's no, he's not going to. The only thing that the president or any political office holder, as they are today in Nigeria, will do is what serves either their personal interest or the interest of their um, 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 they are stakeholder groups, hmm. you know, so they're not going to do anything that is going to rock the boat. So they, they will make all these noises. They'll talk about banning of open grazing. They'll talk about ranching and all of that. It's all noise. They're not going to do anything about it because they don't want to rock the boat. They know what they're doing. So Please tell me, Marianne. So the PDP we... governors have come out to say, oh, they, 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 they're demanding devolution of powers. They want ranching. Who is stopping them? Who is stopping Niger State? Who is stopping Sokoto State? Who is stopping Oyo State? Who is stopping Labour State? So I'm, I'm calling names of states that are run by it, both the APC and the PDP. Who's stopping them from setting up um, um, ranches all across their states and providing it on a commercial basis and enforcing um, and, and forcing these herdsmen and cattle owners, MacBan? Who is stopping them from engaging with MacBan to come? to the drawing table or to a, to a negotiating table and agree a framework and a time frame to move all these cows into ranches. Who's so, stopping them? So, Shago, the federal I, government. I want to ask you a question, too, because you're asking me questions, even though I'm the one who's supposed to be asking questions. But, um, so you're telling me, are you suggesting that 
the PDP, both the PDP and the APC, are just, like, to borrow the words of the APC, are uh, involved in a jamboree of sorts. They're not serious about helping the, Ni the Nigerian situation as it is. They're just politicizing the matter instead of um, dealing with the situation, which they can, in fact, from what you've said, is that they have the powers to do so, but they'd rather not. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying, Marianne. I'm saying that a lot of the things that we've seen happen in this country in the last 20 years, maybe 30 years, have actually been things that could easily be addressed, easily, regardless of the faults and the problems within our constitution as it is today. Yes, we know the constitution is not, um, um, it's not a good document. We all know that. We know we, we need a new constitution. There is no doubt in my mind about that. We need devolution of powers. We need proper, we need a, a real federal um, arrangement where um, the states and the local governments are, are responsible for more than a federal government that is at the center and very far away. But the point is that these constitutional um, uh, problems do not in any way prevent the present political actors from doing the things that need to be done. So again, I'm still asking, I'm not asking you, Marianne, I'm asking you know, them, I'm asking the PDP, I'm asking the APC, I'm asking all the governors, who is stopping them from setting up branches? Today, there is a National Livestock Transformation Plan. Who is stopping them from implementing it? I understand that Fiamme, Governor Fiamme in Ekiti State is trying to put something in place in that line. I understand that Lagos State is trying to do something along those lines. Who's stopping all the 36 state governors from implementing the NLTP so that we move these herdsmen out of the farms and stop this carnage. The problem is that the carnage serves the interest of some people. And until we as Nigerians understand this and speak against it very resolutely with one voice, they'll continue to play games with our lives. All these lives that are being lost is, is, is all driven by politics. And it's a tragedy. It's a travesty. And we need to speak out against this. Darlington, so, this, you this know, is... So for me, they shouldn't come out... So I'm sorry, Marianne, they shouldn't come out to insult our intelligence further by asking the federal government to do things that are well within their powers that the constitution does not prevent any one of them from doing. They're insulting our intelligence as Nigerians. Great. Darlington, this obviously is a challenge to your party and our APC guests uh, pulled out last minute. So you're here representing the PDP. Um, and, and this just goes to buttress the question that I asked earlier on. You, you had 16 years, your party ruled for 16 years, and there was no push for devolution of powers. And now here you are now asking for devolution of powers. Again, my guest has said, Shegun has said that this is all being politicized, that what you guys are doing is just a, a little jamboree and noise making, but that if you really indeed want to change something, the PDP can change, the APC in their different states can make this change happen. So. Why is the governor of your state, for example, River State, not doing anything instead of just crying wolf? It's, um, it's very, very unfortunate on the precarious nature of our mindset in today Nigeria. Our people should understand that when you preach change, change it means that I'm going to do things differently from what it used to be. Assuming without considering that uh, APC in the 16 years of uh, PDP we are asking for the evolution of power and they were genuine about it and today they have opportunity what is happening can they tell nigeria that the social contract they entered with our people that we are going to do xyz that they're actually doing it or not not only in the evolution of power there are promises that we are made to our people are they kept again he's talking about government providing ranches and making sure that they take away herdsmen from the street to to the uh, uh, those areas, people must understand that that uh, what is it called the crazy ordering of cows are personal, they are individual businesses, they are individual businesses. And if and, and if and, and if this and if this individual, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, hold on. And if these individual businesses have not seen the need to, but continuously disrupt the lives and property of your citizens, shouldn't it be the place of your government to institute these things and force them? If they do not go into those ranches, pay for them, then they have to take their cattle elsewhere. Is that not why a government should be in charge of a state? That is why government is providing laws that we guide uh, rearing of cows. 
<coughs> the point of trying to make here is that people must understand this idea of everything that is happening now. For instance, when there are kidnap program, uh, 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 kidnap cases in Nigeria, there's a ah, during the uh, PDP raid, it was more. That is not what Nigerians expect. What Nigerians expect now is that the president must be proactive. We have a president that is silent over issues, all issues, if you may ask. And the president is expected to address our people. Car wool and cattle rearing are personal businesses. Government cannot provide one for them. My dear sister, government did not provide that your studio or your station. Government did not provide it. Somebody suffered and set up that business. That is what we are talking about. Now, that is what crazy is all about. But it wasn't, but it wasn't here, at the expense of people. People didn't case. die for this. I don't want to align myself with People PDP didn't die for this studio before. to be set up. It's a totally different... I mean, I'm so sorry, but this the, the, the comparison, the, the, the basis for comparison is totally off. People didn't have to die for this studio to be put together. Now, if cattle rearing is causing people to die, it's stopping our economy, it's, it's, it's not allowing our crops to grow, of course, government has to step in. We have so many that laws in this country that have not been followed. Does it mean that, that enforcement shouldn't take place because there are people who are acting as if they do not understand the law or that they're ignorant? Can you, can you hear me? I can hear you. The point I'm making here is that the owners of this, they heard us. They are human beings. They are our brothers. All of us are related, interrelated in one way or the other. The point I'm making is that you have to provide ranches. And make business. If you go to Netherlands, the, the ranches is working. Who's providing the ranches? provided by government. That's the point I'm making. Which government? It will not be provided by government. So who? And again, I'm not to totally disagree with the idea of comparison between PDP and APC. For instance, election is coming in 2023. People will go to the field. People will go and campaign to the people. People will present manifestos. And say this is what we are going to do. That is the social contract you want to enter with the people. If you don't do those things, you have failed. That's the point we are saying that FTC government has failed okay. in all the promises they made. If yesterday they were genuinely asking for power devolution and it didn't work, and today they are in charge. If yesterday one fuel was one hundred and uh, one fuel was eighty-seven naira, President Mohammed Buhari then led a protest with that and social money. And on the street of Nigeria to protest, and today we are buying all those at once is something. So, have you kept the promise? So, the point I'm making is that we must be proactive. Let us stop being reactive uh, by saying that this was what PDP did. Okay. If you felt that all this PDP did, we are wrong, and you have opportunity, why not better the life of Nigeria? Okay. Why must you always say that it was bad yesterday? So, it should be worse today. The answer is no. All right. We need to progress. Nigeria needs to move out from where we are. This security is eating up Nigerians. Thank All employment is eating up Nigerians. We must come together to say no. President Mohammed, we All are right. able to support the call okay. that open craving should be abolished. All right. Thank you, Darlington. But let me go back to you, Shagun, Fine, um, because we need to go. We, we, we just have a minute. Um, no. Will we ever make a headway? Because it looks like uh, it's a bouncing ball. It bounces to the APC and then the APC bounces it back to the PDP. And it's just, it, it's like, uh, let's keep looking at the rear view mirror instead of looking forward. So it looks like uh, we might just be at this point for a long time. So is there any end in sight? Yeah, there's an end in sight. And, and that end will be um, motivated and um, 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 instigated by Nigerians by asking the, the right questions and making the right demands. So I have a solution and I want to put it out there. This is national TV, right? It's, for me, it's very simple. Um, let all governors, just forget about the federal government. Like I said, for me, I, you know, <laughs> um, the president, I don't know what's going on over there. So the state governors, right? Let them call out the leadership of MacBan in each and every one of those states, stakeholder group. Second stakeholder group, the traditional leadership of the Fulani tribe that most of these herders come from, reach out to them, sit down with them at a round table 
and give them a plan, right? A time-based plan to say, we are going to set up ranches in this place, in this place, in this place. It's going to be available commercially, um, effective from so, so, and so. Give it a, my suggestion, give it a moratorium of one year, maybe even a year and a half. I think a year and a half is too long, maybe one year, right? And tell them that at the end of that one year, grazing is going to become illegal and any cattle that you see on your roads or in the farms or in the forest will be apprehended and destroyed, right? Mm. You've given them a moratorium, you've called them to the table, you've provided the ranches, and after that time, do the laws and enforce it. Okay. Until we do that, uh, we're going to be keep, keep, keep dancing around in circles. And, and I think this is not as difficult as it sounded. Like I said, it's all politics. They should please stop playing politics with our lives as Nigerians and with our, you know, with our well-being and our livelihood. And all right. do what needs to be done. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you for being part of the conversation. Um, Darlington Oji is former uh, publicity secretary for the People's Democratic Party in River State. And Shagun Shopita is an analyst and he is also of ACT Network. Thank you very much for being part of the conversation. My pleasure. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, um, the Minister for Information, Lai Mohammed, speaks on government's progress in battling fake news. You want to hear it when we come back.